Hi, I'm Kevin Hayes, and today I'm at the Red Mitten Bazaar here in beautiful Canby, Oregon, where some of the most incredible vendors from all over the area come to display their handcrafted items. I'm going to go inside and check out what's really going on behind the scenes. Why don't you join me? Let's go. I'm with Shannon Yeager, who is actually the founder of the Holiday Bazaar here. And tell me a little bit about how you got started. What Was this an idea that just popped into your mind? or? Well, we've always wanted to have our own show. Um, we actually, we've been crafters for about 15 years, uh, my, my daughters and I. And so we wanted to have our own show because we've enjoyed doing others. And... Um, so we've always liked this facility. Um, it's a it's a great facility and just you know just kind of a cute little you know for a niche market. It's for for a country fair. It's you know a good facility. And so we finally found out how to get to the, find out how to rent it. Right. And that was kind of the hey we finally found it. And you know because we looked at some other facilities, but trying to find contact information wasn't always the easiest. Okay. So one of the things that I think is really cool about this bazaar is that when you walk into most, you have the vendors' items set up, they have their tables all displayed, but here, you can kind of walk through and say, oh, I've seen that item back over there, but now I see it again and now I really want it. Is is that something you kind of thought through and well, planned? Not as far as from a, from a you know, reintroducing it back to the consumer, but right. it just more of a having products that go together that play off each other. So people are like, oh, I like this and this and this together. And so they buy it as a grouping as opposed to just, you know, one single item. And so, um, so yeah, we have themed area th areas throughout the show. Yeah. And um, because a lot of our vendors do a lot of different crafts, they don't yeah. just stick to one thing. Yeah. And so that way they can be in a variety of different areas and have their wear spread out through the whole show. So you had to really think that through and say, okay, here's my layout, here's where I want things to be yeah, placed. I, I do a floor plan every year. And um, so, yeah, and we try to change it up so it's not always the same when um, when returning customers come through. We try to put things in different areas and give that way it gives that section different visibility because right. um, everybody kind of perceives things differently. Sure. So. What do you see that when you have customers walk in here and say, oh, this is so cool. What, what are you finding that they're saying this is what's different from other vendors? Um, a lot of it is the fact that um, there's no overseas wear here we are exclusively handmade except for our vintage section and so therefore they don't um, they're not finding things that are you know are made overseas and um, so everything is made local and um, so we have quality um, workmanship we actually have our our vendors they actually have to go be juried which means that they have to actually send us pictures of their work and we don't just accept anybody um, it's more or less by invitation you know and we'll go out to farmers markets or um, you know different shows that we'll see oh we really like this person's stuff and we'll yeah. try to get their contact information yeah. and so um, you know so we we don't just let anybody in. Yeah. <laughs> now I noticed that you have a few uh, book authors here. Yes. Tell yeah. me a little bit about that. How? Do, what? What well, came to mind doing actually, that? Actually, I I actually also own a bookstore, oh. and I work with um, with um, with educators okay. um, who are developing their classroom libraries. And um, I actually hadn't thought of the idea in incorporating it with the bazaar, but I had an author come to me and said, "Hey, can I set up a table?" And I was like, "Well, bada boom!" You know, yeah. that just kind of goes together. You know, with my okay. my other eleven months of my life. Right. And so um, so yeah, having all the the um, authors, and we have. We have five authors with us this year, and some of us, some of them have been with us since the beginning. Great. And um, but we always try to get new ones, and yes. and um, you know some of them are adult fiction, some of them are are you know um, young adults or or kids fiction, and so we try to incorporate a wide variety of age ranges as well as um, as genres for for the literature. Very cool. Now I know there's going to be people that are going to want to come visit who are me watching this video. Where can you send them to find out more information about the bazaar? Maybe uh, find out where it's located at. Um, it's all on our Facebook page at the Red Mitten Christmas Bazaar. Perfect. So they can go to facebook.com forward slash the Red Mitten Bazaar. 
and and that be there. Google. It's on Google. <laughs> Google it. That's the best way to do it. That's how I do all my my searching. Yeah. Perfect. So we'll we'll send people there and then、uh, get them to come out. Any suggestions to people for coming out? Is there is there something unique that they'll find here? You know, you just never know because the whole building is full of really unique items. Yeah. And so、um, I don't think that there's any one thing that is more unique than the thing next to it. Fantastic. So, Thank so. you, Shannon.、Okay. I appreciate you, it. Alrighty. Thank you for being.、Uh-huh. One of the cool things about the Red Mitten Bazaar is the bakery that's down in the basement. And today I'm with Jamie, who's the head baker for、uh, what you're doing here. Now, tell me a little bit about this. I see some incredible bars and muffins going on here. What, what, are, what's some of the treats that people get to experience being down here?、Um, with it being the holiday season, it's just. Pumpkin bars, pecan bars, lemon bars—just things that make the season more merry and bright. And it's just some of the things I love to bake and love to share with everybody else. Now, how how long have you been doing this? Have you been baking your whole life? Uh, for the most part, grew up baking for Christmas at my grandma's house every year, destroying as my grandpa would say. But it's always been a blast. But I've been doing this for four years, ever since we started the Christmas Bazaar, and it's just always been a blast. Tell me, what's one of the things that's selling out the most here? Probably the pecan bars. I have some here if you'd like to try them. I would love to. Yes, absolutely. I always love trying free food. Okay, so this is a pecan bar. Now, tell me a little bit about this.、Um, it, it has a shortbread crust and has a caramely vanilla center with pecan nuts on top. I'm gonna need a minute. Mmm. Oh my gosh, I love that crust. Now, the crust is made from—it's a shortbread, you said. Yes. Very cool. So now, tell me about some of the other things that are out here in display that we see.、Um, we have lemon bars, ginger snaps, a lemon bun cake,、uh, chocolate cupcakes with a cream cheese frosting and a salted caramel drizzle—probably one of my favorites.、Um, I do have a lot of gluten-free options. I Try to make everything also in gluten-free for those who are celiac or gluten intolerant. So that way, there's some for everybody. A little something for everybody. Well, this is fantastic. Thank you, Jamie, for letting me come give some of these a try. I think I'm gonna take this with me. Maybe a couple more things. You never know. All right, we're gonna go check out some more stuff. So join me. One of the cool things about this bazaar is all of the local handcrafted vendors are right here, and one of those is Catherine. And Catherine, tell me a little bit about your business and and how you kind of got started in what is this soap making? Yeah,、um, I am Dragonfly Premium Handcrafted Bath and Body, and I started dabbling in soap back in about 2006, 2007, and it just wasn't the right season of life for me at that time, and so I kind of packed it all away, and then about a year and a half. Half ago, I was just going through another season of my life, and my husband suggested I pull everything back out and just kind of work with it again. And and I did, and I came back with a whole renewed sense of vitality and a whole new set of ideas, and it's just grown from there. And isn't that how businesses usually start? They start out small and become bigger over time, but you have to put the effort and you have to put the work into doing that. Now, you don't just work by yourself. Are you the only one that does this with your business? Well. When I first started out, yes, I was the only one, and I put in a lot of long hours, and I still put in a lot, a lot, lot, lot of long hours. However, my number one primo numero uno granddaughter, Sarah here, she has since the end of May been my number one helper. She brings a set of organizational skills to Dragonfly that I just don't have. <laughs> Now, Sarah, Sarah, I noticed you have some、uh, some more products from probably that were purchased here. Is is that some Something that you've purchased off of maybe some earnings from working with your grandmother. So, what's something that's unique about your granddaughter helping your business out? Well, she brings a complete set of organizational skills that I don't have. I'll admit, I'm an artist. I don't organize well. She has a tremendous set of organizational skills, and as Dragonfly has grown,、um, shows are becoming a little bit more cumbersome. There's a lot more details and things to be taken care of, and she is absolutely amazing at keeping all those details in place for me, so I can do what I need to. To do at a show and at home as well. So she's amazing. So you help your grandmother? Do you go with her when she makes deliveries? Yes, sometimes.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
So now, speaking along the lines of deliveries, uh, do people ever ask you, hey, can you ship or can you deliver? I do ship. I ship nationwide. I ship USPS flat rate. I meet people in parking lots at the grocery store, <laughs> in lobbies at the grocery store, just about anywhere. So whatever, can connect whatever works and whatever, whatever works, works for them. Yes. Fantastic. Yes. Well, thank you, Catherine, for letting us check this out. And I'm sure we've got a few more vendors that we're awesome. going to go check out. So awesome. appreciate it. Thank you. Uh -huh. I'm sitting here with Lauren Lynn, who is an author out of Milwaukee. And Lauren, you have a series of books that's dedicated to the young adult. Tell me a little bit about what you do and how you got started with all this. I started writing in 2011. I was a teacher, and this is the first year I have not been teaching, so I can dedicate myself to writing. And it has been an amazing experience. These books are geared toward young adults, and I started writing for male reluctant readers. Or, I said reading. I meant writing. I do a lot of reading, too. Um, I wrote for that audience because I know so many young men that just really don't pick up a book. And so I was thinking, mm, maybe a little karate kid and a little lightning thief and some of the stuff that really grabs them and pulls them in. So this reads like a contemporary book. The protagonist does have a special ability to give it a little bit of pow in with the story. His problems start small and he solves bigger and bigger ones. In book one, Visions, he's just dealing with bullies and later on he's dealing with bigger and badder villains. So it has been um, a joy and a pleasure to write. It's my outlet. And then I also visit schools so I can encourage students to write because I know a lot of them don't like to. And book five is going to be out in time for Christmas Fantastic. this year. Oh, that's so great. that's great. Now you act as if you speak from experience. Do you have someone in your life that you've able to to write off of and and glean from those experiences? Absolutely. I'm a big TV watcher and I love to go to the movies and I've always been into action adventure and James Bond. But in addition, um, White Eagle, one of my main characters in the book, is a mentor to Owen and my dad's best friend taught karate. And so he's kind of an influence for that White Eagle character. And another very good friend of ours, an assistant scoutmaster, works in a pawn shop. So it was the perfect setting, a place to put Owen where he could work and train and learn about life. So that is where I pulled those pieces from. That's fantastic. Now you have five books. The fifth one is coming out. The fifth one is coming out in days. In days. Now you say... There's going to be more coming? Or are we going to be looking? Hopefully there is more coming. I have a dystopian novel with a female protagonist that I just have finished writing. And now we begin the rest of the editorial processes and get that going and out to beta readers and stuff. And then I have started a sixth book, which will be in the Secret Watchers universe, but is not part of the series. Fantastic. Now, is there a place where people can go online to try to check it out and maybe do some ordering? Amazon? I'm on Amazon. I'm on Ban Barnes & Noble. Noble, um, let's see, Sony, you can order a paperback at Powell's, and I have a website, laurenlinauthor.com. Perfect. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you Appreciate so it. I'm going to probably come check this out. Good, great. Awesome. Love to have you. Thanks. Take it easy. I'm here with Heather Nelson, who is also one of the local authors here in Oregon, actually. And you have some really unique books and some that are even exciting for adults because they're true stories based on true stories. Tell me a little bit about how you got started with all of this. Well, um, I guess it all starts from wanting to be a storyteller, which I feel I'm a storyteller and mainly for children. Um, I've been writing stories for many years and have a box full of stories. I've written mostly for kids and grandkids. And um, after I retired from a hospital where I worked, I just started deciding I was going to publish a few and see how that went. And it's been going pretty well. I had two books earlier. Um, this was the first one, Daisy the Protector Dog, the first book that I published. And the second one is First Summer with Horses. These have been out for a couple years and um, did well. And this year has been my year of the books. I've got three books published this year. Wow. Two more coming next year. Fantastic. And two of them for this year are children's books. Minerva's Maneuvers and the Calendula Flower. This one is not even officially released yet, 
it until December 23rd, but I got it, my author's copies, in time for the bazaar, so I had to bring Very it. Very good. And, um, and this last book, now, you were telling me a little bit about this book. This is not only a cool book for readers, but also for you personally. And tell me, why is that? What's unique about this book? Well, this book is um, about an unknown brother left behind in England at the end of World War II who found out he was adopted when he was 15, searched his whole life to find his birth mother and any family she may have had, and found us in 2013. I am part of the lost family. Wow, that is fantastic. What did you, how did you feel when you found that out? Oh, I can't even begin to describe it. I had, we, none of us had ever heard of him. Yeah. So my mother had died 12 years before took that secret with her to the grave wow. and um, so it took I don't know really how adjusted I am yet but he is a wonderful person he's he came over in 2013 and he met us all I always thought I was the oldest with three younger brothers but then I found out I have an older brother wow. and it's truly a miracle and he's a wonderful person we keep in touch all the time online he's, he lives in England still in Market Wheaton in York Yorkshire Wow so, um, have you been over to visit? I have not been to visit him. I went to England when I was 12. Okay. But I have not gone back over since then. Right. Well, hopefully soon. Well, I do hope so. Yeah. Either that or he better come back over here. There you I'm go. There you go. Now, people can find your books online and on Amazon? It's on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, um, lots of other places, the publishers, websites, of course, and um, can contact me. Well, like I'm right here in Oregon. Fantastic. Thank you, Heather, for the time. I appreciate it. And I look forward to, uh, to getting some of these books and reading them, definitely. Oh, yeah, awesome. Thank you. I'm here with another author who is also local to Canby, right in Hubbard, and this is Bill Burton. Bill has a series of books that not just one or two, but you have a full seven book series that have some incredibly colorful fronts to them. Tell me a little bit about your books, Bill. Well, this is the first one, The King of the Trees. Uh, last year it won the silver medal in the uh, international reader's favorite uh, competition, if I could get that out right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all of these books are connected as okay. a series. Uh, the uh, setting is a lot like Oregon or the Northwest. I like to say, why do the British get to use their flat little island for all the fantasy that's ever been written? You know, it just seems like people have it set in, in Britain, whereas we have in the Northwest some really great geography, Absolutely. Uh, landscapes, and so I try to incorporate those into the books. It's an allegorical series. Uh, in that sense, it's a lot like C.S. Lewis. Uh -huh. uh, so, you know, it's a Christian allegory. Very cool. Uh, people seem to really enjoy it. All of the books have glossaries and pronunciation guides in the backs oh. for easier reading or <laughs> reading aloud. And they're for preteens, teens, adults, parents, grandparents. What do you find the range, age ranges that you've seen reading? Uh, well, I sometimes say 8 to 88 because I get people from all, all over that spectrum yeah. saying that they enjoy the series, but probably preteens and teens are the most common right. readers uh, right now yeah. anyway, yeah. So seven books, when did you start? Well, I started about 30 years ago. Okay. Uh, I started with a, uh, as I recall, a manual typewriter, gave that up, went, started writing in spiral notebooks, wow. filled a whole box up with those, then left it for 10 years, and then finally I got a Mac, and I was able to <laughs> stop using whiteout, <laughs> and uh, that, was, um, that was the end of the story right there. I mean, I just took off when I found out about yeah. computers. And that was fun. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. I, I really enjoy writing. Seven books. Now, are we going to be seeing an eighth book coming out? Well, I would like to. Yeah. Uh, I have some plots in mind, but right now I'm working on a, a different series uh, that is actually set in Oregon. Oh, proper. Right, yeah. it's, not, it's not a fantasy, but it is speculative uh, fiction for adults, but more like young adults. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. So, yeah, it's... Uh, 
has to do with dinosaurs, actually. Oh, fantastic. So the younger age could probably meet to that. I, I know my children love dinosaurs, so yes. that, that's definitely fantastic. Now, where can people find your books? Are they online? Yes. Uh, our website is greencloaks.com. It's named for some of the characters in the in the series that wear green cloaks, mm -hmm. so it's just www.greencloaks.com. Uh, they can get them at Amazon, but it's cheaper at our website. And I always autograph everything that we ship. So. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, that's yeah. Great. So that's an advantage to that's people. Great. Well, thank you, Bill, for your time. I appreciate it, and I look You're forward welcome, to uh, checking out some of your books. Thank you. All right. Thank you for your time. You never know what you're going to find here at the Red Mitten Christmas Bazaar, from handcrafted notepads and pencils and paper and picture frames and even this, uh, snowman soup. Check them out online. Google the Red Mitten Christmas Bazaar, and I hope to see you here. Oh, candy canes.